Crossover time with Dibs and Willard. What's up, gents? Yes, sir. Steiny. What's going on, buddy? Hi, boys. We're roasting today. Shout out oh, the morning roast. Oh, I, I heard it. Um, I saw a lot of last night as well. <laughs> that was incredible. Good, good God. There were some, Dibs, you there did was some a people. Yeah. I, I oh, remember yeah. your video. Well, you know how hard it is? I, I, it's like gotta I, be. I sat there. Well, first of all, some right. this is all, I'm seeing all the stuff on social media while I'm doing the show with E from last night. And I'm like, I can't wait to, right, I yeah. got to get to Netflix when this thing's over. And I finish it, and I run upstairs, and there's a 10-year-old looking at me and goes, Dad, you want to do popcorn and movie night? And I'm just like, oh, no. when the hell am I ever... Let's watch the roast, son. Yeah, right. <laughs> Sit down, and let's do some Aaron Hernandez jokes. Yeah, exactly. That would be hilarious. You had him. I'm like, I, I don't... To tell when the that. hell am I going to still be awake where Man. I'm able to watch this in my house? No doubt. I don't know. But my God, that was racy. It's incredible. Ooh. It was great, dude. Yeah. You guys have been a part of a roast. Absolutely. Man. Our former boss. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I got to be the All roast right. master. I got to play the role of Jeffrey Ross. And uh, oh, man, you, you try to like eviscerate and you, you try to like run as wow. much material as you can. And it was pretty good. It's I like, tough. Though. I like, I like, Bled well, and, and I, Bledsoe was great. Bledsoe man. was great. I dig, you guys know I'm a huge stand up comedy fan. And I always like, I dig it. Not saying that I'm a prude or whatever, but I love it when a comedian can make you laugh. Without the shock factor, like without doing the oh, yeah. you know, or just like constant cussing and gross and all that. So like, yeah, I had a little extra appreciation for Bledsoe because I was like, as creative. Nikki Glaser was good. Nikki for me. No, awesome. were, oh it's my not, it's God, not that that's bad. Okay. It's not that it's bad. It was it's just it's, Andrew dies Clay. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's easier. It's an easier joke. It's an easier joke to pull off. That's all. Stoddy, watch it tonight. No. <laughs> yeah, I won't. Probably not your I thing. heard every joke yeah. now, well, today. No, you have it. Yeah, well, I forgot about Hernandez. They had some air. Oh, Hernandez I'll go back stuff. and listen to that. <laughs> Good God. Julie, I mean, Julian Edelman. What what would be within the realm of possibility would be to just listen to Belichick's 10 minutes. <laughs> now, that I might do. Just watching him, man. My favorite moment might have been how hard Belichick laughed at himself. That was tremendous oh, when yeah. Edelman ripped him for not getting any job offers. Pretty funny. He, he was laughed. belly laughing. <laughs> he was belly laughing. I'm like, that's the guy. Yeah. That, there's yeah. a guy in there. For sure. We just don't get to ever see him. And you know exactly. that from uh, yeah. working with Rich Ornberger, yeah, who the, played for him, and the they people, all say that he's know. A, you know, absolute cut up oh. and he's a lot of fun. <laughs> I'm looking at Dibs. You remember the roast, the Jason Barrett roast? Dibs had the line of the night. Zachariah, will you shut the... I can't repeat what he said. Because he was little penny on the side. Totally. Line, and you just... He was trying shut to... Shut up! And yeah. it was... I never... I said, wow. <laughs> it's, it got a little bit uh, personal, but it had to. How, how could it not? It had to get there. But he wasn't even in the target of the roast, but... He was trying to chirp from the sideline, and I had to I had to put him down real quick. I told Stoddy, you had a few drinks when you went up there. He goes, no, I didn't. I was why I did. I, said, I thought you did, but both of you guys went up I there. Was, I didn't <laughs> want to go up there slurring. You were good. You were solid. <laughs> See, I wish we had the footage. Oh, oh there is uh, There is footage. Jason Barrett oh, has the – oh, he has the tape. Of course he does. He has oh, the tape, boy. of course, no doubt. Right. Willard, have yeah. you ever been Let's roasted? Uh, no. Could you take it? Of I course, could. Okay. absolutely. I think we all could. Absolutely. Maybe Early, not so. Earlier in my career, maybe not. I, I talk about this a lot. Like one of the one of the like secrets of sustainability. You gotta in, laugh. In, at well, yeah, or or just be able to like, especially now. You know what I mean? Like the social media. Good God! Like there's not a day you that goes by. Tell like me. imagine, right? Anybody out there who has any job? Like imagine if every day. This is athletes too. Every day. People are wow. clowning you on the internet wow. every single day. Rich Mitchell, you got to <laughs> you got to <laughs> get you got to get used to it. You got to get used to it. But yeah, I could take it. I don't know how good I would be at dishing it. Wow, you'd oh, be wow. you'd be like a Seinfeld. You wouldn't use profanity, and you'd no Drew Bledsoe. I didn't oh, see yeah, it, so I don't know what that means. This does about me. Uh, you wouldn't hit below the belt. And there, and Probably that's, not. and that is allowed in a roast. Clearly, uh, totally. Yeah. That's what it's is. recommended. Yeah, yeah it's <laughs> it's necessity. Recommended. I mean, come it's on, necessity. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what would you think of the uh, the news that uh, Clay Thompson and the Orlando Magic have mutual interest? You want to fire on this one first? I think that it's not surprising. We've all thought that it would be a perfect fit 
for a guy who needs a new destination, a team that needs shooting, and also a team that has the cap room. So, man, Godspeed, Clay. Hopefully you can get somebody to drive your boat out there. I think there is a lake. Yeah, it's got probably some rivers, a couple rivers. They're, they're, it's Florida not, Keys, it's, it's not, Ponder Pool. It's yeah. not Oklahoma City. <laughs> yeah, there, there's water. And he hasn't left yet, Willard. Um, here, here's my take. Um, I feel like he wants to leave. I feel like he wants... The, all our conversation about what would you pay him and what would you do to keep him and what would you and what would you and what would you... I, I, I think may, behind closed doors, end up being irrelevant. I think, I feel like Clay wants to leave. Mm. Mm. We've talked about it. A lot of conversation throughout the year about what he prioritizes and what his, is good for his mental health. And I'm starting to translate that into, I don't think Clay Thompson wants to spend the rest of the time he has left being compared to his former self. Mm. And he, you have no choice but to do that here. Right. And, and that will never happen anywhere else. And you know what? I, and I think that that would be freeing for him. Yeah, you know what? I you said it better than me. I just I thought you know maybe it's just time. But you're right. He's been fighting for two years yep. to to talk about how. And if he goes somewhere else, they haven't seen him for twelve years. Or, Orlando fans haven't seen a three pointer go right. in in two years. In twelve years, right? right. So they're they're like. <laughs> Jalen Suggs, Scott. two of ten. That's oh. nice. They'd be like thirty eight percent. Are you kidding me? This is right. incredible. So I like. Just, I don't know, Warrior fans. Just ask yourself when you watch Clay the last couple of years. He look happy to you? He looks like he's trying to be happy. I know what's happy to me. Exactly. He's trying to be happy. Yeah. And so if he's going to find a new destination, why not go somewhere that has a very young team, Man. Orlando, a lot of cap room, Orlando, a place that is in more of a win mode than the Golden State Warriors, certainly, and that's Orlando. So you go there, you get to be the veteran, you get to be the OG, and you don't have to worry about, like Mark is saying, having to try to play up to your own standard because you're going to be in a new spot. Mm. Hmm. Play out your career, try to win in Orlando, and see how it goes. Look, obviously something happened at the beginning of the year that was very unsettling to Clay. Maybe it was that offer. Um, no I'm doubt. I'm sure that that was a portion at minimum of whatever it was that was going on. And all the meetings that they've talked about having had and what those must have been about. And then, then now we're coming off the bench. And at first, that was really frustrating for him. And then he acted like it was okay. No doubt. And, and maybe it was and maybe it wasn't. I think he would prefer to not have it be that way going forward. But, um, yeah, there, there, clearly there are some feelings there. And then the other thing I also think is the Warriors probably aren't as hell-bent on keeping him as they say they are. I would agree with that. They have to say that. And I don't think they're being totally like disingenuous. I don't. I don't think that at all. But if the Warriors were like, "We really want Clay Thompson," well, then they'd have him by now. They would have done something during the year that that was satisfactory mm. to all sides. So, um, yeah, I, I I have reached a point where I believe it is more likely than not that he plays somewhere else. Next well, I saw did wow. your interview with uh, you and Dibs with his dad and not that his dad was going to spill the beans, but I've been around a couple blocks and that just for me on the guru computer sounded like, you know what, they they got plans to do something else and I don't want to be messy, but I do think of when they ask Clay to come off the bench. So you're telling me a guy that helped you guys get four chips, I'm struggling you guys are going to demote me to coming off the bench, and then you needed me, and I went back in there, and he was a good soldier. But I keep telling Steiny, I wonder if there's resentment there, Willard. And then if you say the caveat of, hey, you come back, but you're not starting, who would want to live through that? I built this, or I, I was part of it. Right Now I'm, I'm watching Lesser, what I deem Lesser, play before me. Maybe it's just time for a new start. Definitely, and it's. I think there's a certain amount of, uh, it's not humiliation, but it's humbling wow. when you do what you did and you came back and you win another chip and now you're struggling and you're going to ask him to come off the bench. And I think the biggest piece, and Mark talked about it being a portion of why he was feeling some type of way at the start of the year, I do think that 
the Draymond extension combined with the offer that he reportedly got for two years and 48, and he's probably thinking, you got to be kidding wow. me. This is all, I mean, Draymond gets four years, and you're going to give me this two-year deal, so I'm going to go from making 42 to making 24. I think that that definitely is And that's not even selfish, it. is it? Like, um, that, that's... That's and selfish human. is not the word, but it's if it's the reality of the situation, then that's where we are. And I don't yeah. think Orlando's giving right. him forty-two million a year. No, no, but they probably give him thirty. Yeah, that's a Steph card. Something probably, like that. Probably give him thirty. I, I bet they wouldn't hesitate to give him after that game yesterday. Yeah, they're, where they're, they're, they're in that kind of spot where like thirty to right. them they is have not thirty. Them. They have give. they have sixty. Yep. So like they they've got thirty to give. Number one, they absolutely need someone like him. They are a young team that's on the way up. They they would love to have a veteran presence who's won a title before. Like he checks so many boxes for them that that are irrelevant with the Warriors. So would you? What's another five mil to them? You know, and and then for you to ask, like when you ask, is it selfish? I look at it this way: like when you're a free agent, I don't know what matters to you matters to you. I can't. If it's money, then it's money. I don't think it is. I don't. Yeah. You know, I don't. I I think that. Those lines get blurred. Like money turns into mm. emotion, turns into disrespect, turns into hurt feelings. So they'll say it's not about money, right? But it is. Like it's it's all of these things. He just doesn't look happy to me. Look, he may he may be back. I don't think it's a long shot that he's back by any stretch, but I I, I just I start to put breadcrumbs and puzzle pieces together and, and and it I've never heard Clay Thompson say the stuff that I mean Steph Curry's never even had to say it because they would never even let him get to free agency but I've never heard him say the stuff that Draymond and people in this situation have said about the brotherhood that they they want to finish a career with who they started the career with the most we've heard him say was one time on Dre's pod where he's like I mean you know of course I want to stay with the dubs but got to figure out what makes me happy. Yeah. And he's never said that staying with the Dubs is what would make him happy. You're uh, listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMZ FM and HD1 San Francisco, an Odyssey sports station, always live on the free Odyssey app. Twitch and YouTube powered by First NorCal Credit Union. Upgrade your savings dividend. Open a First NorCal first class money market today. I wonder with with Clay, if, if he signs with Orlando for... Tw- does it matter if he signs with Orlando for twenty million or thirty million? You know what I mean. It does, yeah, it does. If he signs for what the Warriors could have conceivably paid him, then it becomes a slap in the face. I think for for me anyway. Mm. If the Warriors could have gotten him for twenty, but he goes to Orlando and plays for twenty anyway, that to me is kind of a middle finger to the organization. What, what if it's what if he comes out in Orlando and says? He pulls a Brandon Crawford and says, "You know, the Warriors just—they said to go find another or, offer." Or, but what? If, what if? Hold on. What about the order of things? What if the Warriors acquire a, a, a big name player, and therefore they're just out on yeah, the, on the Clay the, Thompson conversation? And it just entirely. becomes apparent, right. and then and then Orlando gives him twenty. You're not going to be mad mm-hmm. at Clay Thompson like the Warriors. On, like I think their option A is to end up completely out of the Clay Thompson sweepstakes, wow! Because they're going to acquire someone else and they won't have any money for Clay, unless Clay wants to accept like ten or fifteen. They're not going to do that, right? Yeah, it's uh, tis a puzzlement, as uh, Yul Brynner said in The King and I. Tis a puzzlement. He also said, "Shall we dance?" <laughs> he did. Shall we? He you know, did. Well, did you know I was? A, I'm a musical fan. Did you know that? I I, I do know that. I oh, think that's been okay. proven a number yeah. of times, not only by your uh, spoken word, but but by your singing word. Oh no, I mean like actual mute, like I Broadway music. I know what you mean. Yeah, <laughs> music is music, Steiny. Hey, uh, you, make, you make it every day together with Goo. No, that's a four. Well, yeah. Wow, that's a four. Uh, what else you got? Talk to us. Um, what? What floats your boat the most if I threw four names at you? All right. Okay? Le- uh, like, forget all this LeBron stuff and, and Giannis and Embiid. Um, those names are just too big. The, the weight of all of that is too much. I don't think that anybody's going anywhere from that group. Let me give you four other names. Uh, Jimmy Butler, Kevin Durant, Paul George, and Brandon Ingram. 
Well, mine's you, get to, you get to pick one. Mine's actually easy now. Okay. It's and? A, it'd be Ingram. Ingram? Even uh, though not... Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant? Yeah. Kevin Durant. Yeah. Kevin Durant. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'll, sure. I'll join you on the Brandon Ingram track. Okay. Uh, Why? He is shockingly young. Do you have any idea exactly. how old he is? Yeah. I feel like he's been around for 10 years. But right. has his growth been stunted, and can he hit the ground running in this new organization? Good Kevin player. Durant, I already know. I don't even need to put him in the microwave, Dibs. We know what it is. We've done it. We don't have much time and hit the ground running. I love I, Ingram, but Steiny, he's he's in a little, yeah, little I think, transitional phase I think, right I now. I think Warrior fans think that if they get Durant back, it's the Durant that <laughs> left. And, and I don't, I mean, uh, I get it. He can still score. But even after Dre's comments on that well, podcast I, about him, well, Dre might say he doesn't. He wasn't play. He doesn't play defense anymore. That's first of all. That's a he good was point great about defensively. We yeah, he was. About it. He was. That. That's. I mean, might have been the key to why they won, because uh, he could defend like yeah. a center. So no, if you like, not only do I think you're right, Steiny. We, we may all think we're getting the old Kevin Durant back. You also think you're getting that old team back, right? Yeah. Clay wouldn't even be on the team anymore. Everybody's into their mid thirties. There's no Iguodala. There's not like there's none of that. Mm. There's none of that. So I I love the idea of Ingram because because that is that is now and and into the future and more realistic. Twenty six like. years old, and I also think what did we say all year that the Warriors really need. Well, Goo, you and I have talked about this a lot. A guy that could create his own shot. And length. Length. They, they need a two. Okay, right. Brandon is a two. He is a phenomenal two. He when is, he plays. He's a wobbly then, one. Wow. He's up 75% the, of the year. That's true about all these guys. Well, Durant, listen to, listen, so 27, listen to, six, and six. Listen I'm to just, every name that we've talked about. We can't talk about when he plays. What about Joel Embiid? What about Giannis? Oh, I'm out on Embiid. Okay, I mean, Embiid, bad guy. Any of them. Dirty player. KD well, played Joel 75 Embiid. games last year. He did? Yeah. That, that's Has scary. he ever been hurt before? <laughs> well, <laughs> like, I mean, they like, you know. Ingram is hurt every year. No, I'm with you, Dean. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, you can you can set your watch to it. Yeah. This so, year he was very durable, and he missed 18 games. And that hurt him. It was a bit the wrong time. So, exactly. Um, let me just tell you a little story about the old Warriors Uh who never won? They they'd missed the playoffs for twelve straight years. And they're always looking for a way to get a star, and they could never get a star. And then the star became available, but he was flawed. But they took him anyway, and he came here, and he was great. Corey Bar McGetty, Barry Baron Davis. Oh well, yeah, like he you are not like if you got Brandon Ingram right now, he'd have. And I'm not saying he was on Baron's level, but he has less, far less baggage than Baron Davis had. When he was coming, I'm just saying, every anybody you get is going to be fraught with either the age issue or or injury or underachiever. But it's the, like okay. going to be one of those. But probably. you're not going to have a funeral next season if you're telling me you could have Durant or Ingram and be a better team. The answer would be Durant. Um, For the future, I, I, I I'll give you all that. Man, I don't, I don't 27, know. 27, 6-6, and six, 75 games, 41% from three. He's Kevin Durant. Right. And we he's won here before. Yep. Like, wouldn't you want to go down that lane? Yes. I, I, I'm I not, like, picking one does uh, not uh, mean I, I hate the other three. We spent a good portion of last week. I'd love for the team to reacquire uh, Kevin Durant. Um, if it doesn't work, I would I'll be able to sleep at night but, like we tried. But I but I think that uh, this would be a much more complex, and it was complex last time. This is a much more complex sort of a uh, Kevin Durant experience, and and a, a much less sure thing than it was last time. So you're not giving up Kaminga to get Ingram, right? No way. Oh. Probably. Uh, I'll yeah, see. I'm, 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 any I trade know. that you're going to make, I think, to get a big you, boy is going to involve Kaminga. You know, the one thing about Ingram, though, is... I, I call him baby KD. I, I think, I think uh, uh, the Pelicans might think there could be some addition by subtraction there huh? with Zion. Because they did not play badly at all when Ingram was out. Right. Well, this because is, they got high. Great know. point. Yeah. So maybe, maybe you wouldn't need... To yeah, throw Kaminga right. in there I because mean, they, might, you know, like they may be thinking, well, Kaminga is just like Ingram; he's going to want his shots. They may want more of a role player back. Yeah, believe I mean, it or not. Look at what the teams are saying. I mean, James Jones is holding press conferences to what beg Kevin Durant Man. to not be mad at them. 
And the Pelicans He's have not, not mad. The Pelicans have not said. I think he is. No, yeah, no. yeah, but I mean, the, the, the Pelicans have not said anything. But the report is already out there that they're not even going to offer him a contract. Wow. So one of these teams is dying for the guy to stay. Uh, the other team, flat out, like it's already out there. They don't want him. So Damn. yeah, what's the that that factors into the thought completely? Like the price would would be lower in theory for for Brandon. Ingram. You know, you know what might be a, a the move is to uh, reacquire D'Angelo Russell there you and go. see if you can turn him wow. into the same kind of positive <laughs> you did the last time you had D'Angelo oh, Russell when nobody thought you could you. do it. LeBron's going nowhere. They'll draft Bronny and do whatever. Yeah. Uh, I he's mean, not going anywhere. Dude. I don't think he's going anywhere. Yeah. We'll see. I mean, I think they made the move already that LeBron probably wanted, which no. was get rid of Darvin Ham. And Handy, so, my boy. Yeah, he's going to land on his feet. <laughs> Handy's he's yeah. a good coach. He's an elite coach. He's going to find a spot on someone's bench, no yeah. doubt. All right, well, you guys have at it today. Should be a fun show. and um, We'll be listening. We will be listening. And huh. On, I got to tell well, him who's I mean, getting inducted. Here he tonight. goes. He yeah. always does it. Jenny yeah. Thompson. He looks I'm at me with the, the mouth of game. No, I know. I'm, I'm just waiting for you to the minute you're about to say the number nine. Oh, okay. Uh -oh. So you're. I'm yeah. like. So let me ask you this. I interrupted you. <laughs> no, go, go ahead. Like go Jenny Thompson, the yeah. swimmer yeah. from Stanford. Uh, John Taylor Sabian and Patrick Marlowe. and Chris Wondolowski. Thank you. Yeah, How dare you? you. Yeah. How dare you? There you go. And we'll have the full wrap up tomorrow on 95.7. Again.